Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Gina. I've been, um, I've received this book in the mail to, by Amazon, delivered by Amazon today, and I promised I would do a flip through. So here it is, half past eleven on Tuesday night. <laughs> my usual time to do videos. Um, it's an unusual book. I saw it on AM Vintage last night or yesterday and sent for it straight away because I was quite curious. Um, I. From what I saw on Amazon, there was a whole bunch of different books on um, Elvis in graphics, um, cartoon form. But this is the one that uh, Adam and Mari were showing, and I thought, well, I'll go for this first. I don't know how many other ones there are, but this one looks good. Okay, so the back of it. Read that. So I'll give that a, a few minutes for you to read that. You a bit of detail. And then we'll do the flip through. I'm not playing any music in the background because I don't think this will take very long. It's hardly worth putting on <coughs> a record or a CD and then only, only having one or two tracks. This book was published in 2021. It's rather good. I, I didn't take long to read it. I mean, how long does it take to read a comic? I mean, okay, it's just longer than a comic. <laughs> but um, it still, it still is virtually a, a comic, not like reading a book full of text. Um, it starts from... Elvis's early days uh, when he went to Sun Records and goes through to pretty much the Ed Sullivan show and stops there. Um, a lot of it, the, the text is actual quotations from things that we know happened in Elvis's lifetime. Most of it um, is pretty factual as far as where things happened. Um, uh, and then, the, you know, the people that he was involved with, uh, like his parents, Scotty Moore and Bill Black, and then later on, Colonel Parker. And um, the, the drawings, the, the artist's work, it's pretty good. I mean, uh, you know, you can, you can easily recognise Elvis and um, Marianne Kaiska. I don't know what she looked like, but um, there's enough photos of Sam Phelps around to recognise him in some of these drawings too. Dix Dixie Lock gets a mention, and then he went up with Dixie. Well, actually, yeah, it started, no, it didn't start, it started before he went to Sun Records. It was more as a teenager uh, at school and so on. I don't want to dwell too long on it um, so you can read it all the text because obviously the uh, publisher wouldn't like it if <laughs> people read it on here and then don't buy it. Um, but I, what I, I think I paid $17 Australian for, I think that was right, because I bought a couple of other books at the same time, all around about the $20 mark, but um, yeah, I, I, I think this is good. The pages are fairly thick. They're not flimsy, so it's good quality. And this each section has um, the, the dates, what, where he was and what he was doing. For instance, this one, October the 2nd, 1954, the Grand Old Opry. And then um, Louisiana Hayride, October the 16th, 1954. So the artists and the, the people who've um, written this book have certainly done, done their homework as far as um, the facts, the time, uh, the times and people involved um, in Elvis's life. Louisiana Hayride. <laughs> I love these kids screaming. <laughs> Elvis! <laughs> Woohoo, Elvis! <laughs> 
that was getting stripped by his fans. <laughs> the Airmen's Club, Biloxi, Mississippi, where he met June Juanico. So June features in that one. Um, RCA Recording Studios, Nashville, 56. Oops. So I guess if you weren't an Elvis fan and you're just a bit curious about his beginning, um, and you didn't really want to read a, a whole book about him, this would probably be a good way to go. So the uh, final pages. Um, it's on September the 9th, 56, the Ed Sullivan Show. The end. A photo, picture of Elvis coming is here. So, yeah, I um, I really like that. It's certainly different. I don't think I'd buy any more, um, as far as the graphic, the cartoon style books. But I think that's a good one to have in the collection. Now, while I'm here, there's something I want to read out to you because it's just so funny. Um, this book is Richard Glover, and is an Australian journalist. And he's written. Um, quite a lot of books and he's just he's just the funniest guy he's, he's uh, on the radio as well as books he's written and in this book which is his latest one he mentions Elvis twice I'm sure he must be an Elvis fan because of the way he speaks um, he, this this book is about I <laughs> how do you describe it um, things he hates and things he'd like changed and like I said I'd, 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 I could read the whole book to you this book is about all that's wrong with the world. If only we could change it. <laughs> um, let me see, page, just find the bit where he mentions Elvis. I was quite surprised. I was reading through it. I thought, oh, he must be an Elvis fan. So, okay, in this particular segment, he's talking about, um, I wish they would stop inventing new kitchen appliances. Um, so he's talking about the omelette maker. He says, I don't, um, expert from Breville, a device which can cook, poach and steam eggs without the guesswork. I don't mind the guesswork, with eggs in particular, the guesswork is part of the fun. I'll put them in cold water and stand, staring at the pot, waiting for the water to boil. Once the water begins to boil, I'll leave them for three minutes. A time span that can be measured by singing Elvis Presley's Can't Help Falling in Love from start to finish. If the eggs are perfect, it means I've managed to sing the song accurately neither missing a verse nor altering the king's tempo. The, the sense of satisfaction that results cannot be matched even by the, the Breville expert. <laughs> so that's the first mention of Elvis. Uh, and then he goes on to mention him again at more length. Um, <laughs> this is funny. I wish I didn't have to remember so many passwords. You know what it's like on your computer, you've got to put a password for everything. So he says, after a few years of being employed by the same company, you can run out of ideas. I've tried Elvis 1 and then Elvis 1935, the date of his birth, and his is capital H. <laughs> um, when prompted by my office computer to change my password yet again, I reached for Elvis 1977, the date of his death. A few weeks later, the computer had had enough of the king of rock and roll and I had to change my password again. So began the series focused on Jesse, Elvis' stillborn identical twin. Thus, Jesse won, Jesse 1935 and Jesse 1977. This placated the angry computer and I was able to log in and do some work, but not for long. Due to a system upgrade, the computer declared a simple combination of letters and numerals was insufficient to deliver the high level of security required for me to read an online newspaper. Now, my password must feature between six and nine characters and my choice of numbers, capitalizations and symbols symbols. I contemplated telling the computer to F off before realising I have just created a password that suits the new rules perfectly. Alas, I discovered F off is less than ideal. <laughs> I can never remember the right amount of exclamation marks and I'm forced to write out the message and stick it on the side of the computer. <laughs> Mind you, it does stop people using my workstation on the weekends. <laughs> Okay, that bit wasn't about Elvis, but I just, uh, I'm sorry. I had to include that. I hope you get a laugh out of it anyway. So, funny guy, really funny guy. I have emailed him and asked him permission to use that, but I don't think there'd be any problem. I'm not, not 
it's not like I'm plagiarising. I'm giving this book a plug. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. See you later. Bye.